Today, we're diving into the essential toolkit for document collaboration, Google Docs. Whether you're a newbie or a seasoned user, this guide is packed with tips and tricks to boost your productivity. Let's jump right in. Number 1. Getting started with Google Docs. We're going to focus on Google Docs and everything you need to know to succeed with it. You can access it directly at docs.google.com through your internet browser. Another way to access it is through drive.google.com, where you can create a new Google Doc. Google Drive serves as the storage for all your Google documents, including docs, sheets, slides, forms, and more. Number 2. Creating and Organizing Documents To access Google Docs at docs.google.com, simply log in with your Google account or create one if you don't have one already. From there, you can create a new document by clicking the plus sign to start a blank document, or explore various templates for things like meeting notes or brochures from the template gallery. For this demonstration, we'll begin with a new Google Docs document by clicking the plus sign. The initial step I take with a Google Docs document is to give it a title. By default, it appears as an untitled document. To change this, simply double-click on the title area, delete the default text, and input your desired title. Pressing Enter will automatically save the document to your Google Drive. This automatic saving feature distinguishes online applications from those you download. After titling your document, it's prudent to organize it within your Google Drive. Click on the folder icon to access your drive, where you can create a new folder by pressing the checkmark icon. Once the folder is created, you can move your document into it, ensuring a neat and orderly arrangement within your Google Drive. After familiarizing yourself with Google Drive, accessing various documents becomes effortlessly organized. Number 3. Basic Text Formatting Let's begin by typing our initial sentence. You can simply use your keyboard to input text. I'll demonstrate some basic formatting options, gradually introducing more advanced features. As you type, you'll notice a toolbar at the top. Currently, I'm using the default Arial font, but you can choose from a variety of fonts available. Additionally, you can adjust the font size using the provided options or input a specific size manually. Basic formatting tools such as bold, italic, and underline are also available. Simply select the text you wish to modify and apply the desired formatting. Number 4. Advanced Formatting and Editing I have the ability to italicize, underline, or change the text color using the options provided. Additionally, there's a highlighter tool for emphasizing text. For instance, selecting yellow would highlight the text accordingly. Furthermore, there's a drop-down menu for selecting text styles such as titles or headings. For example, choosing, my first docs, from the drop-down would create a title. You can easily modify these formatting options by selecting the text with your mouse and adjusting accordingly. I'll revisit the option for inserting links and images shortly. Number 5. Alignment and inserting text. Let's discuss alignment next. To demonstrate, I'll delete the current text and paste content from another document. Once done, I'll click the arrow to close the side panel, allowing you to view the document clearly. I intentionally included some spelling errors to demonstrate how to correct them. This text serves as a description for the current video I'm creating. Now, let's explore some alignment options. By default, the entire document is left aligned. However, I can easily center align it by selecting the appropriate option. There's also the option to align everything to the right or justify it, aligning both left and right edges. Additionally, line spacing can be adjusted, with options for single or double spacing. You can also utilize numbering and bullet points. Furthermore, there's an option for indenting paragraphs, which creates a specific space at the beginning of each indented paragraph. To reverse any action you've taken, you can use the keyboard shortcut Command plus Z on a Mac or Control plus Z on a PC, or simply access the Edit menu and select Undo or Redo. Now, let's delve into two useful options, Spell Check and Word Count. For Spell Check, you can find it under the Tools menu, labeled as Spelling and Grammar. This feature highlights any misspelled words and offers suggestions for corrections. You can review and accept or ignore these suggestions as needed. Additionally, the Word Count tool, also found under Tools, provides information such as the number of pages, words, and characters in your document. You can choose to display this information while typing to monitor your progress. I can also switch to view the character count if needed. Let me remove this and return to my document. 
I'll switch the display to show the word count instead. Now, moving to the bottom of my document, I'll demonstrate how to insert an image. Simply click on, insert, and then, image. You have various options to choose from. You can upload an image from your computer, search the web, or select from Google Photos or Google Drive. Typically, I prefer to search the web, which brings up a selection of images. After finding the desired image, I can simply select it and click, insert, to add it to my document. From there, I can resize the image as needed. Here, I can choose how the text will wrap around the inserted image, offering several options. If the image isn't needed, it can be selected and deleted with a simple press of the delete key. Let me demonstrate uploading an image from my computer to illustrate another method. By selecting an image file from my computer, I can upload it directly into the document. Once inserted, I can adjust its visibility and resize it as needed. Additional image editing options such as cropping are available here. Following that, let's discuss inserting links, which is another useful feature. By highlighting a section of text, I can utilize the link option to insert a hyperlink. For example, I can type in my website address, edarabia.com, and apply the link. Now, when I share this document, anyone who clicks the link can directly access that website. When a link is created, it's automatically underlined and appears blue. At any time, you can remove the link by selecting the text and clicking, Remove Link. This will revert it to its original formatting. Moving on to inserting headers and footers, you'll find the option under, Insert. While we won't cover all the available options like tables, drawings, and charts, let's focus on headers and footers. Let's add a header here. As you can see, a header section is created where you can input your desired header text. Clicking within this area activates it as the header, offering formatting options such as header format and margin adjustments to customize its appearance. Number 6. Real-time collaboration. These are the settings available for headers and footers, which can also be customized differently for the first page if needed. Typically, I don't alter anything for the first page, so I'll simply click, apply, here. Now, let me introduce you to a powerful feature called Explorer. Clicking on the Explorer icon allows you to search through all the documents you've created as well as the web. For instance, if I type, Google Docs, and hit enter, I'll receive various search results. The, Cloud, option pulls up documents from my account, including the one I'm currently working on, while the, Web, option conducts a search using Google, displaying results such as Wikipedia entries and other relevant information. Additionally, there's an option to search for images and insert them directly into the document by clicking the plus icon. And just like that, it's inserted into my Google Doc. The Explorer feature proves incredibly useful, especially with frequent use. Now, let's move on to collaborating and sharing a document, a standout feature of Google Docs. Up here, if you click, share, you'll see that it's currently set to private, meant only for me. However, typically, you'll want to share a document. By clicking, share, you can invite others by typing their name or email address. You can add multiple people by pressing enter or tab and typing out additional emails. Additionally, you can include a note, such as, can you help me, which will be attached to the email notification Google sends. Ensure you click the drop-down menu to assign different permissions to different individuals. For instance, if you want multiple people to edit the same project, which is possible in Google Docs, you can adjust permissions accordingly. You have several options when sharing the document. You can choose, Editor, which allows the person to edit the document simultaneously with you making it a highly efficient collaboration tool. With this option, you can see their edits happening in real time. Alternatively, you can select, Commenter, if you want someone's feedback and comments without allowing them to make direct edits. Viewer, is another option, ideal for sharing the document with a larger audience for viewing purposes only, preventing any changes or comments. In this case, I'll choose, Editor, to demonstrate its capabilities. After selecting the desired permission level, simply press, send. Once shared, you'll receive a notification confirming that the document has been shared with the recipient. Now, let's switch to a different computer to demonstrate what happens in real time when the invited person accesses the Google Doc. Upon acceptance of the invitation, the invited person gains permission to access the document, as indicated by the presence of two different icons at the top. You'll notice two distinct icons, one representing myself and the other representing the individual I invited. Additionally, you can observe their cursor movements, denoted by a pink cursor. Even if we're in different locations, 
this real-time collaboration feature allows us to work on the same document simultaneously. It's a testament to the powerful collaborative capabilities of Google Docs. Whether we're in the same country or continents apart, we can seamlessly collaborate on a document. This functionality allows for efficient teamwork, regardless of geographical barriers. If there are multiple collaborators, you can easily navigate to each person's contribution by clicking on their name. This feature is particularly useful when multiple individuals are working on different sections of the document. Furthermore, you have the flexibility to adjust permissions for each collaborator. For instance, if I only want feedback, I can grant commenting privileges instead of editing. Let me revisit the share option to demonstrate this once more. Number 7. Additional features. Additionally, they retain the ability to modify font colors and access other formatting options we've discussed earlier. Finally, let me introduce a couple of other features accessible under the file menu. Clicking this menu reveals various options, one of which is the ability to download the document. If you need to use the document for a different purpose outside of Google Docs, you can easily save it in various formats such as PDF or Microsoft Word. Saving it as a PDF, for instance, allows you to store it on your computer just like any other document. Once saved, you can open it as a PDF file, enabling you to print or email it as needed, which can be quite convenient. To print the document directly from Google Docs, simply select the Print option under the File menu. This presents you with an overview of the document, where you can specify the number of copies, choose between black and white or color printing, and select your printer. It's a straightforward printing process that you can use with Google Docs. Thanks for joining us on this journey through Google Docs. We hope you've gained valuable insights and techniques to enhance your document creation experience. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Until next time, happy documenting!